to see how that is really done, let's just look at how Unix does it, for example. So you provide your user ID and your password. We use the user ID to select the entry in the password file for this user that we're talking about. The salt is stored here. The hash value is stored here, isn't it? This is sort of the data structure we keep. To log in, you're going to supply your password. So we start on this side later on. So this is what is set up initially for create the user account or set up their password. At that time, we determine the salt and compute the hash value and things like that. So later on, a user comes, types the password. Well, they're saying who they are. Okay, if you give your user ID or login name. Based on that, we're going to find the hash value and the salt. So the salt and password going to be put through this hash function. And it's slow because if somebody's doing brute force, it pays to slow them down. So we pass these two things through the, the hash function. So this is typed by the user based on the claim by the user who they are. This is what we find in the file that we have where we store the salt value. So the two are passed as input to this. The result is compared with the stored hash value if the two match, then we allow authentication is, is successful. If they don't match, then authentication fails. So this is what happens when we have make use of salt to deal with different users picking the same password and as a result having the same hash value, and that would be a problem. When you add salt, the rainbow-based, rainbow table-based attack, uh, think about what would happen to, to that.